Welcome to another Parker Adams Boat Sales video review. Today I'm going to be looking at this Stinger. This is the 800 GT model. Now this boat is a 2014 boat and actually I've known this boat since it was born. So a um, very close friend of mine actually bought this boat from new. We sold the boat on for him about two years ago and the current owner has had her for about two years and has asked, her, asked us to find her a new home. So what I'm going to do today is just run you through the boat, go through some of the features, the benefits. Uh, as you can see they are very very beastly looking boats. They have a really deep V hull on it and this boat is fitted with a stunning carbon effect tubes. As you can see she's got a full set of covers here. There's an on water cover here for the console. Both of the Scott suspension seats are covered and the rear seat has also got a cover on it. There's a generous area here which has got the sunbathing sun pad on it. And what I'll do is run through all of this on the boat and she's powered by a Verado 300 which has done about 250 hours. I went out on this boat yesterday and did the drone footage and the performance is absolutely stunning. The Verado engine is so effortlessly smooth. Quite often the only reason that you know the Verado engine is running is because you can hear the telltale going into the water. So without further ado, let me start walking you through the boat and show you a little bit more about this Stinger 800 GT. So the bow of the boat seems like a good place to start. As you can see, you've actually got a full size sunbed here. Give you an idea of the size of it, I'm about five foot 10. If I lay down, lots and lots of space there. So this boat is covered with the Sprawling Diamante effect fabric. It's a really nice soft fabric and it's in a lovely burnt orange color. Now, a lot of these boats have quite way out colors. There's a couple of stingers that live on the Hamble River and I've seen them going up and down. They've got sort of a bright blue upholstery, one of them. One of them's got a beige upholstery. So you can have any color scheme that you want, but this one's got the burnt orange and I think it works really nicely with the carbon effect tubes. So underneath this is a massive locker space. Let me show you how you get access to that. I just pop these off and I'll put that on the side here. There's a gas hydraulic strut under here and you lift up this locker space and the locker space is absolutely huge. All of the covers for this boat go down into the locker and just to give you an idea of the size of it, I can, I can step right down into the locker huge amount of space. In here there's enough room to put two or three blow up paddle boards, you can put your water sports equipment, a really really huge space, certainly everything can get stored in there for your day out on the water. There's also this boat is fitted with a transom shower and the shower, the water tank is just in there so you fill it up there. Pull this back down again, I pop this one off here and put this onto the side. There's another storage locker on the bow. Once again, another huge space. One of the beauties of this boat is it has a very, very deep V hull. And because of that raised deep V hull, and also this step up here, it means that this locker space is absolutely voluminous. So two enormous lockers here. And then again, still in the bow area, there's this third locker on the front and in here you've got the anchor. You can see in here that the owner's very sensibly padded this area with an extra bit of cushioning, which is a bit of carpet in there. Really sensible idea on a rib when you store an anchor in the bow locker, just to put something in that bow locker. If you're in a heavy sea and the anchor starts moving around, you don't want to start damaging your gel coat from inside. So it's nice to see here and gives you an idea that the owner has got that level of attention to detail. Really nice features on these boats, things like the cut through there so that the rope can just nicely sit in there out the way. So when you're at sea on quite a lot of boats you end up with a bow line that sits inside the boat. Once you're going along on this boat, tie it off there, drop it into the anchor locker, it's nicely out the way, you know there's not going to be any risk of that rope going around the propeller. So just for a last time, just going to show the boat with these covers again. Um, it just goes to show again this level of attention to detail, which I think on this boat is absolutely fantastic. Um, each one of these seats has got its own individual seat co uh, cover. Um, but also what you've got here is you've got a cut into this console cover, 
where the fender goes. So often on boats, when you have a console cover, you end up losing the space to put a fender anywhere. But on this particular Stinger, it's been thought through, and the grab handle there, which is alongside the suicide seat, has got a, a slit inside the cover, so the fender can sit really nicely in there. So I've now taken all the covers off the boat, and you can see, once again, showing off these really lovely burnt orange color seats. Now, both the helm and passenger seat are Scott's suspension seats. Now, if you don't want know what that means, in short, when you're in a rough sea and you're sat on a normal jockey seat, there isn't any give in the seat. On these, they're suspension mounted, so they have, like a mountain bike, a suspension gas strut inside the seat. When you go over the waves, they cushion you, so you're in a really comfortable position. So, the helm position on this boat, really, really good. Actually, I say helm, the passenger position. You've got the grab handle here, which is really, really important. Everything is close and easy to hand. You've got a really nice Garmin VHF. You've got a Fusion head unit. You've got a plotter right in front of you. And then all oh, you've got this Mercury Smartcraft gauges um, just there and the throttle system here. Now being powered by the Verado, this is all fly by wire. So it's got a very, very smooth throttle take up. It's all done electronically. Through the Smartcraft gauges, you also have a range of checks on the engines, checking the oil temperature, checking the revs, everything is displayed just here. And if you were to have any errors on the engine, they would come up on these gauges straight away. You've also got a compass here and a couple of drink holders. It's a nice place to be, and obviously your waterproof carling switches and your kill cord switch just down here. Nice, easy place to put that around your leg when you're running. Everything you need is really nice and easy to hand and you have, of course, a windscreen there just to lift the, the wind just above your head. So I'm now sat on the stern of the boat in the seating area. Unlike perhaps the Cobra ribs <clears throat> that of this age have the sculptured seating that you can just get three people into, whilst those are really nice and they bolster you and hold you in really nicely, this doesn't have them, but it does mean you can potentially get more people along the back here. So I think it'd be a little bit of a squeeze, but if we weren't in social distancing times, you'd actually get four adults across the back here, and it's very comfortable. You can see the burnt orange fabric, and then right the way around here, the fabric comes round two fusion waterproof speakers here built into the radar arch. Now this radar arch doesn't just look good, it also stores the horn and there's actually a solar panel up there, really useful for just keeping the batteries topped up and that's something which has been factory fitted. Now underneath this seat here is an absolutely cavernous locker. So just inside here you have access to the batteries, you've got access to the bilge, but it's enormous. I think you could probably comfortably put about eight paddle boards in backpacks into there. There is a huge amount of space on this boat. For a boat that I would consider to be a very, very capable offshore rib, I don't know that there's another boat that has quite as much space as this boat. So here we are at the back of the rib. Uh, Apologise for the tripod, it's quite low sunset here at the handle, so there's a little bit of glare, but um, my OCD of video production will have to ignore that for the time being. So, back to the boat. Here you can see a really nice attention to detail around the stern of the boat. If you're out doing water sports, then you can see it's very easy to step from the sea onto this plat bathing platform. There's another teak step just in here. And then really safely, you can walk around the radar arch. So on the stingers, they've actually got this bit here where you can walk around the arch, holding onto the arch for safety. You don't need to tread on the tubes to get back into the boat, and you don't need to clamber over the back of the seat. So it's a really nice feature on the stingers. Just to talk a little bit about the Verado for a second, so this is a 300 horsepower Verado, which I would say is pretty much the perfect balance for this boat. Acceleration is fantastic and a top speed of around about 50 knots. Now, she's fitted with a 400 litre stainless steel fuel tank, so in terms of cruising range, it's huge. You could comfortably go from here down to Dartmouth, Sulcombe, here being on the handle, um, and have plenty of fuel in reserve. So she's very capable for motoring around the Solent, and of course going further afield if you wanted to. Channel trips would be done with ease. Just draw your attention at the back here, there's also a ski pole here. Now it's a removable ski pole, which is really important because quite a lot of boats that have a fixed ski pole, it makes fitting covers really difficult because they need to fit around the ski pole. This ski pole, massive stainless steel gauge ski pole, and it just lifts out and can get stored in these huge lockers underneath here. So everything is set up here in a really nice way, and there's also even a flagpole holder there that the ensign can just slot into. So it's a good, generous space to be. Just again, just referring back to that Verado engine, you can just see in the back there power steering pipes running through. 
All the Verados are fitted with power steering as standard. Now a lot of other manufacturers, it's still an option. Suzuki, Yamaha, it's still an option on them. But on the Verados, it's completely standard and the ease in which you can maneuver this boat around marinas is breathtaking. Literally one finger operation. If you haven't sampled one of these Verado engines, um, I fully recommend coming down and having a look at this boat and the way that this Verado engine performs and how it maneuvers in close quarters. It's a great setup and probably the ideal balance on this boat. So I brought the camera on board the boat now so you can see that the height of the helm console and everything here. Everything really is easy and quick at your fingertips. You've got a great position steering wheel throttle just here in the right hand side and when I sit on the jockey seat remember what I said it's the suspension seat but I'm only five foot ten and still I've got a really nice clear view. There are some ribs I've been on recently where when you sit down at the seat the console actually completely obscures your view and it's really hard to see anything. Not on this Stinger, it's really nicely designed. You sit on the jockey seat with comfort and I mentioned about the jockey seats earlier being these Scott suspension seats. There's a really nice feeling here that when you're going over waves the suspension seat is going to be cushioning you. So it's a great place to drive. This is me sat down and this is me standing up with a great view of everything around. So I keep talking about storage on this boat, but there's so much of it, it's almost impossible to ignore. So this is another absolutely voluminous locker space inside the console here. What's really nice about the Stingers is the attention to detail in all of the wiring. Uh, if you look at some of the photographs taken for this boat, then you'll notice I zoom in on that and go into quite a lot of detail. In years gone by, under here, consoles, ribs used to be a bit of a bird's nest of electronic mess. Stingers finish these really, really nicely. Everything's bolted away, secured in a really nice way. Now, this particular boat is fitted with a cool box. So there is a, six, a 12 volt cool box down here. But if the owner wanted to, you can actually specify a toilet in here. So through Seacox going straight out the bottom or through a caravan style port um, you've got space here. You've also got two windows, so on either side of the console you've got some light in there coming in. So if I went in there and closed the door you wouldn't be in pitch black but you would have privacy in case you were using the loo. So it is an enormous space there. I know the current owner kept quite a lot of water sports equipment in there, kept a couple of fishing rods for his children, um, a huge amount of space. Just down there you've also got the fusion head unit. This particular boat has a fusion um, repeater on the top so you can control the stereo but you know that the actual main fusion unit is safely locked away out of the salt environment down there. So huge amount of space. This boat currently fitted with a refrigerator but you could retrofit a sea toilet if you wanted to. Just to run through some of the features this boat has got, it comes with blue LED underwater lights. It has LED deck lighting throughout, so at night this boat really does look absolutely fantastic. She's got four speakers with a fusion head unit. She comes with a chart plotter, depth gauge, smart craft controls powering that Verado, and the Flexi Teak is this nice light coloured uh, teak tension to detail, you've even got Stinger 800 GT uh, which is CNC'd into the teak at the front here. So I think this boat is fantastic. Um, she's serviced, she's cleaned, she's ready to go for the season. Um, new to give you an idea, this boat brand new price is around the £120,000 mark. Um, we've got the boat listed for around half that price. Um, I would find it hard push to find a better example uh, of the Stinger 800 GT, certainly on the market at the moment. I've known, as I've mentioned earlier, this boat since it was brand new in 2014. I know it's been loved, I know it's been looked after. The engine service history is absolutely immaculate on it, looked after, serviced every single year and ready to go for the 2020 season. Please do get in touch with us. My name's Andrew Adams from Parker Adams Boat Sales. We do these video walkthroughs so you can get a feel for the boat without needing to come down. But obviously, come down, see us, experience the boat. Um, test drives are welcomed and we look forward to meeting you in person. Thanks for watching. Do please like and subscribe the channel and we look forward to bringing you more of these video walkthroughs of the boats that we're selling in the next few weeks. Many thanks.